Yo, 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 what's good, people? Welcome to the channel where we talk about music licensing, music production, and music business. If you love any of the previously mentioned, be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date on all my latest content and hit that bell icon so you know exactly when that content is dropping. Shout out to everybody that's in the chat so far. Let me know where you guys are from um, and what you do. I want to see who we have in the building. It's another live Q&A slash music is my business podcast, man. So we always here going to drop some gems. We're going to answer some questions. And I definitely got a couple other cats, man, that, that are super dope brothers in the game that they're going to come drop, drop some gems too. So y'all literally like y'all about to get triple the gym dropping today um so the first guy first guy i'm gonna add man is is the homie big homie kev and um man i don't know i don't know if y'all know him if y'all should know him if, if y'all involved in the tv space but he's literally like an og man in this this sync licensing game and, and getting your music placed in tv so let me bring my guy up let's see all right big homie kev man i'm good i'm good we also got our guy lr man he's gonna be joining us soon as well so we'll pull him in um as he comes in but um man dude i'm good man it's been it's been a minute since we've been trying to pull this together uh so how you feeling bro man i'm i'm blessed right i have no complaints right now i'm blessed grateful to be here man great yeah, yeah so i guess tell the people man a little bit about your background your career as a producer how you got started and then you know how you kind of transitioned into the the whole tv tv sync space okay well um you know we all pretty much as producers we all pretty much got the same story almost mm -hmm. i mean you know i uh started off in church you know of course playing music music in me you know still playing churches yep. um Tried, tried to go about, you know, being a successful producer, making beats every day. And, you know, I noticed that I had all of this music. But I didn't have no money in my account. Right. And, and I, you know, I worked random jobs here and there. And I tried to figure, like, okay, there has to be some type of way that I can make money with my music. So, you know, I, I did what every producer tries to do. I tried to start selling beats. Yeah. That did okay, but didn't really give me the results that I wanted. So, you know, now the whole time I'm thinking my music is perfect. My music is great. Like all of us, right? Yeah. All of us think that because we hear our music, our music is great. So I started to submit my music for opportunities, not necessarily TV opportunities, but just, you know, opportunities to get anything happen. Right. And what I found was is everybody that commented on my music said that my drums were weak. Mm. My melodies were thin. My sound selection was off. And, you know, that threw me for a loop because, you know, I'm thinking, OK, I've been making music all this time. These guys don't know what they're talking about. Right, right. So I kept submitting music everywhere, kept submitting music, and nothing happened mm -hmm. until I finally got with somebody from a TV company that told me everything that was wrong with my music. So that was like a big eye opener for me is I made music for 10 years thinking that everything was great, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. So once I got my music together, I started to submit to TV companies. And, uh, you know, I came across a company that wasn't the best company. I, I, long story short, I ended up having to pay ASCAP back like 30 grand behind working with this company. Dang. So, I mean, you know, it, but I didn't give up. <laughs> I kept going. And now, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm getting my I'm hearing my music on TV every day, collecting royalties every quarter. Yeah. And teaching other producers how to do the same. But I've yeah. been there and done that with music. That's what's up, man. That's what's up, dude. Like, yeah, man, cause I, I kind of had a similar background, man, just growing up in church, being a musician and, you know, just trying to figure out how to make some money with with the music, man, and, and do it at a at a higher level. I see a guy, LR, in the chat. LR, man, if you want to jump on, jump on camera, man, just... um. Let me know, and um, I think you got I think you got the link from uh, from Big Homie Kev, but we can pull you up too, man. Um, if you want to chop it up with us, um, but yeah, that's what's up. What's up, Russ Staten Island? Um, Trina George says Kevin Barnes. She's she's familiar with you. Shout out to Trina Rice and Green. What's good, what's up, Chicago Trina? MC producer writer? Nice, nice. My guy Herbie Brown living in Maryland, but uh, from CHS South Carolina. That's what's up. Marlon McNichols, what's up? Lamar, what's good? Checking in from LA um, or Louisiana. What's one of one of those? Um, 
Man, that's what's up. So, man, bro, you said like 30 racks with ASCAP. So, like, were they just keeping all the royalties you were generating until you, like, recouped that? Yes. And and it was a painful situation because, you know, I mean, you know, once you start getting paid for your music, you need that money, you know? Yeah. So it was painful to yeah. see 1200 come in with a minus in front of it that goes right back to ASCAP. I mean, it was painful. Yeah, I could have gave up, but I mean, you know, that was one of my things that kept me going. I knew it was possible. Right. I knew it was, and I kept going. Yeah, man. So, um, let me see. Uh, we gonna, I'm gonna send my guy, I'm gonna send um, LR this link real quick. Yeah. I actually sent it to, uh, to his email. I mean, we were already on, so I, I couldn't send it to him while we were on. Oh, okay. But, I'll shoot it, I'll shoot it to yeah. your I, um, your IG real quick, LR. Um, okay. Man, so like you talk, you talk a lot about. Honestly, we we all kind of talk about it, but you really hone in on something that's super important in in regards to this whole t like sync licensing, getting beats specifically placed on TV, and that's the structure, man. Like I know me personally, I struggle with that for the longest, especially transitioning from. You know, uh, being a gospel musician and producing beats for artists and things like that, like how long did it take you to figure that out? Like, and like, how did you figure out that you, you know, you had to make a shift when it came to structuring your music, right? Honestly, you know, the the company that I dealt with, where I had to pay that money back, mm -hmm. they were the ones that taught me that I was structuring my music wrong. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't all bad. I mean, it was bad, but. It yeah. wasn't all bad. They they told me that's where I learned a stinger. I didn't know what a stinger was. Right. That's where I learned to transition my music. In my world, it, it, we used to call it a breakdown. Yeah. You know, and then um, I I came from the background of making beats for rappers and singers. It took kind of it, it took a while for me to kind of adjust to the TV format because, like I said, you know, when when you come up in music production, you just know that you got it down already. You know it like. Yeah. Nobody can tell you your music is not ready. And my music wasn't ready. So, I mean, to answer the question, it took me a little while to figure out. But once I figured it out, placements yeah. came and it didn't stop coming. Yeah. They didn't stop coming. Yep. It was you know? the same, man. Like, that's that's when I uh, I noticed a, a major shift. Uh, we about to bring LR in. That's when I, no I noticed a major shift as well, man. It was just like, as soon as I changed that structure, the consistency in placements mm -hmm. A bunch of Hold on me, good old e cam. And then let me know in the chat if y'all if if we're back live. Has some technical issues with uh with e cam. Y'all know how it is. Um, so yeah, go ahead, drop a comment in the chat, and then we'll get it we'll get it going. I think that fixed it though. I just changed the the stream size. <clears throat> May you can edit edit this part out, and then we'll just we'll start we'll start the podcast like from the um from the beginning, or from from this okay. point since we had those those technical issues. Uh, Okay. okay, cool. I think we're back. All right, y'all. So shout out to Ecam, man. I had to change some settings so so we can be good. I don't want y'all to miss these gems, man. So we got the big homie Kev. Um, so we just gonna start from scratch, man. Big homie Kev, introduce yourself. Let the people know who you are, and then we'll go to LR, man. All right, I'm, I'm big homie Kev. You know, uh, been producing for a long time. One of those producers that started off thinking my music was ready. And I found out that my music wasn't as ready as I thought. Went through uh, this, that, that, this. And, you know, um, now I'm actually getting my music placed and not really even sending a whole bunch of music off. Helped thousands of producers uh, create um, income, putting their music on television. And, you know, just in a great space right now, mentally, uh, mm -hmm. music doing great. And, uh, man, it's gra I'm glad to be here, man. That's what's up, man. Thank you for, for coming on. Um, LR, man, let the people know who you are and what you do. What's going on is LR, LR Beats 89. Um, yeah, I'm just, you know, pr pretty much a um, 
piggyback off Kev, you know, music producer for TV, you know, thinking my music was ready too at one point. And then, you know, I had to get, you know, got a couple no's. Then, you know, I had to, you know, go back to the lab and recreate and, you know, reformat everything. And, you know, I just got in a lane. Uh, kudos to you, Clint and Kev, for, you know, definitely, you know, teaching the producers in the community how to do it. And uh, like I said, I just caught a lane, caught a stride. And I've been in the game for about four years, TV game for about four years now, and have my music on almost every show that's pretty much out, pretty much. So yeah. uh, kudos to you guys, and thanks for having me on. Indeed, man. Thanks for uh, man. Thanks for being on, and thank man. You, you're one of the you're one of the producers who take the information and run with it, bro. Like I mean, I think I had like one conversation with you, like, and it was a yeah. rap. You know what I mean? Like, um. And that's that's key, man. Like implementation. Like people can give you information all day, but it's like unless you do something with it, it's pointless. Um, so, man. So, you mentioned something about hearing those. And for the people in the chat, man, make sure y'all drop y'all y'all's questions in the chat too. Like we're not just gonna talk; we'll answer questions as well. So, if you guys have questions, drop those. But um, you talked about hearing no, and and I know all three of us have have heard plenty of no's before in the industry and on the sync side. What was it that you know? How did you take the no and then turn it around and turn it into a yes, and then ultimately a placement, and then ultimately some royalty checks? Like, what was that? What was that process like for you? Like, did it discourage you? Did it motivate you? What did that look like? And I guess we'll start with Kev. Um, honestly, man, I mean, you know, of course it always, you know, frustrates us, you know, nobody really likes to be told no, but it's a decision. Like when you make a decision to go forward and make this happen for real, mm -hmm. you have to listen to that no and do exactly what you're told behind that no. A lot of people hear that no and say, no, I got it. I got it. I don't need to. Okay. Well, and then five years later, they still in the same place because they didn't do what they were supposed to do behind that. No, people don't understand. Music doesn't get placed. Professional licensable music gets placed. And if you're getting told no, there has to be a reason. So, I mean, of course it was frustrating, but I mean, you know, after you fix your music, do everything that you have to do, those placements will come. Yeah. Yep. I agree a hundred percent. What yep. about you, Eloy? Yeah. Uh, that's a fact. Um, you, once you fix it, the places will come. But for me, um, I had to just realize not to take things personal. I think um, in the production community, producers might take things personal when they tell them your music is not ready. You know, so when they was told to me, you know, I just had to look in the mirror and say, well, this person says it's not ready. Well, I'm gonna I'm going to get it ready, whatever I got to do. You know, so yeah. that kind of motivated me to go harder and go stronger than those to to turn them into yeses. So. I took that approach as, you know, I'm not going to take it personal. I'm just going to work harder, work smarter, work stronger. And the same person that's saying no eventually will say yes. That was my approach. And, you know, that's how things kind of happen for me. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Yeah, because I, I feel like a lot of times the no isn't like we don't like your music. It's just like, yo, some things need to change. And you have to ask those questions like, OK, what what was it about it that didn't make it work? So I can go back, change those things and make it work. And you know both of you guys know like once you figure that out once you figure the, the structure out and, and the elements that they want and the sound selection and all that you you have the formula at that point and all you have to do is replicate it um so it gets it definitely gets easier um it definitely gets easier joshua bonnet says how many no's do you guys think you got before you got your first yes Whew. Lots, lots. I mean, if I, you know, if, if 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 I were to keep it real, lots. And but honestly, it was my fault because see, some of us get told no, and we take it and we 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 adjust. Some of us get told no, and we don't listen. Mm -hmm. And so it was my fault because I didn't listen after the first no. I should have listened, but it was after the twentieth no that it was like, okay, maybe I need to make an adjustment. Yep. So, I mean, you know, you can honestly get told no one time and fix it. But the problem is, too, is a lot of these companies don't even tell you what's wrong with your music. They only say yes or no. Yep. So it's up to us to kind of seek that 
professional that can tell us, okay, what am I doing wrong or what am I doing right with my music? Mm-hmm. So, you know, hopefully that answers the question, though. Yeah, indeed. We got one from Russ, too. Russ says, I've been listening and learning and changed the way I structured tunes to be more sync ready. I like to know how much value you place on originality within that structure. So I guess just kind of changing the way you structure mm-hmm. music, but like, how do you, how do you keep it you like, like what you would do or, or keep it original? Well, here's my philosophy on that. And I'm, I'm sure LR, you know, got something with, on this too, because we actually have a group where we work with them every week. Mm-hmm. And one thing that we say is we want you to be original. Like, like you being original is what makes your music, your music. So, When we say TV format or TV structure, you don't have to change what you do. In fact, TV companies want you to do what you do because that's what they love about placing music. You know, so keeping it original is kind of like, you know, that that's like that's a given. That's what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, as far as, you know, I wouldn't really. And this is me personally, like a lot of producers talk about using samples. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with using samples and royalty free loops, but if you don't know how to disguise them where they're not used or sound like they're used by every other producer, mm-hmm. it stops you from getting a placement and it gets everybody in trouble. So as far as being original, I mean that, you know, you should be being original. That's what we ask for. You know, that's something that has to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And I um what I would say to that is um Definitely want to stand out, um, but don't overthink it because sometimes we tend to overthink things and we're like, oh, I got to be so, so original. But you got to understand what's getting placed and what, you know, music supervisors and companies are looking for. And um, like I like to like what I like to do, whatever's top 10, I, I you know, I listen to, I, I practice, but I, I have something that makes me stand out and everybody knows that's what my brass. So I, um, Whatever, whatever, every track I do, I always put brass in it just to stand out, just to have like a signature sound. And not saying now I'm the only person that uses brass, but I don't know if we froze. Okay. Yeah, but but that's something I, that for me to stand out and be, you know, oh, that's an LR track because I, I the, the brass. So find something that makes you stand out, but. You know, you don't have to over overthink it. And that's the main thing I want to say. Don't overthink the originality. Yeah, I agree, man. Um, <clears throat> over, <laughs> like I feel like producers sit down, and if you tell, like I've even with artists, and you tell them this is for TV, immediately just go straight to overthinking. They just like wait, like no, it's like yo, I shouldn't even told you that. Like just do you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But well, just. Just follow this structure, you know. You don't need to. You don't need to do this. Just do this, um, and, and just yeah, man. Just be you. Be original, um, and you know, just make sure you're giving you're giving supervisors those ed- those edits, those stingers. Um, you know, make sure it's building gradually. You know, throughout the track, so it's not just loopy and repetitive. Um, so all of that stuff, man. Um, shout out to Joshua. Joshua Bon Bonnet. I've been pronouncing my guy's name wrong for like four weeks straight. My bad, man. I've been saying Bonnet. <laughs> Yo, so we got we got another question from uh from Taria. She says, What are some of the things you noticed you were doing wrong with your music, especially since you were an accomplished producer already? Um Well, I mean, one thing that I noticed that I was doing wrong before is drums. my drums were so thin and you know i used to only hear them in my earphones so now here's another thing i grew up on r&b music so okay. no matter what genre i was making r&b always leaked into that music some kind of way yeah so i couldn't escape what i grew up on i was so programmed music wise it was hard to make current music Mm -hmm. so that was one thing that i noticed that i had to adjust quickly you know yeah it was uh, it was the same for me too my my drums my drums was the weak point because i could play keys you know that was that's my main instrument but 
the drums like it I, I know one of my producer mentors he he like loaded me up with like gigs of drum sounds he was like bro like you got to layer these joints or do something cuz you know they they needed work so for years man like i just worked on getting getting my drums better man and and getting that learning how to mix them properly and all that stuff um and then for me was i like i liked a lot of neo soul um gospel r&b stuff and it was kind of the same for me. It was always in my music. And I I wasn't following the trends, right? And a lot of times you find in TV and film, they want what sounds like what's on the charts, what's on top 20 and, and billboard charts and all that stuff. So, you know, just kind of finding that balance between what you, what you like to do, your sound, and what's needed. Because at the end of the day, like, we're serving clients, you know what I mean? So we got we to gotta give them what they need, too. Yeah. And that's um I would say for me, uh just being current, uh a lot of my music coming up, it would sound like five years old, you know what I'm saying, from whenever the time was. So for me I had to just make sure to study a lot of what it's what's new, what was new at the time at least. And um the current the current because, you know, my music sounded outdated at, you know, for a while, you know. So that and mixing, you know, mixing out, you know, that was one thing I, I I'm still learning how to do now, but yeah. that was one thing that really hindered me because, you know, sound quality is very important. And if you have poor mixes, as we all know, you know, companies can't use that. So I would say being outdated and my mixing kind of, you know, was something I used to struggle with. Yeah, definitely. We got one from John Wyatt. What's good, John? He says, did you or do you have a schedule for creating tunes? How many a day, a week do you... Do you have a schedule for certain genres you create? Uh, what what do you get? What do you guys just take on that? Um, I don't have like a schedule. I mean, you know, like back in the day, like here's one thing: a lot of producers, I, I feel like a lot of producers don't understand. Like when I grew up making music, I was doing nothing else. Hmm. I nothing else. Like I was locked in a room from morning to night. So it was just something that I mean. I had to get better. Like that was the thing. Like I had to get better. So I wasn't on like a particular schedule and I, I, I didn't make like a, I used to make a certain amount of music, but I noticed that, you know, if, if you make 10 tracks in a day, it was only for bragging rights, but only two of them was really good, right. you know? So it's like now I focused now on just creating one quality, great track, no matter how long it takes. And, and I don't try to make 20, 30 different beats because that one quality track can take you further than those 10 maybe good tracks, you know, could ever will. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't have like a schedule or anything. I just go as I'm inspired. Yeah. That's dope. What about you? Yeah. Oh, uh, so when I first got my first contract, um, I want to say I was making a track every day. No lie. Like, okay. Five out of seven days, I was making a track every single day. Um, I, as soon as I would get home from work, I would just make my track, send it off to the uh, send it off to the company. So I would get in a, a routine of doing that for like for a good two years straight. So now I'm at the point where I don't really even make music anymore like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I do sometimes, but I don't. I haven't made a beat from scratch in about two three months. Mm -hmm. But I'm still getting placements from all the old work that I put in for the past two, three years, yep. which which kind of catapulted me to where I'm at right now with all the new places I'm getting each and every day. You know, yep. so when I first started, every day I was making the track. But now, like I said, I, like Kev said, um, as I'm inspired, I'll, you know, I'll go about making the track now. Yeah, I, that's the dope thing I love about music licensing, man, is like, you can put in you can put in work you know for those first couple years first few years and it like it doesn't really get old because like same here man like old stuff dude that i did when i first got started is getting placed on new seasons of shows and it just it just starts to add up man to where it's just like it, it doesn't stop like once you start like it literally unless and i feel like you would have to stop for like a few years for stuff to, and probably even longer than that, for stuff to just trickle down and just you not see anything. Um, but yeah, I think for me, like I, I don't have like a set number of tracks set for like like per week. 
it's more so just you know work depending on what briefs I have um, and what's kind of a priority and I just try and knock out again it's about quality like you know it's not I'm not necessarily trying to knock out as many as possible but I'm just trying to knock out you know the highest quality you know possible tracks because you know they could they could get used over and over and over again mm -hmm. now also one thing that a lot of producers need to pick up too is it depends on where you are like if you're starting off in the mm -hmm. tv field i would say pump them out as much as you can like pump them out as much because we're all three in the point now like i haven't made music for tv i don't even know the last time and mm -hmm. it's still royalty still come and it's all of that old music that we all did years ago. So when you're starting, pump that music out That's so you can point. get to the point where if you don't feel like doing it or not even necessarily feel like doing it or you may not have time to do it, you can still have that music working for you. Yeah. That's the benefit of this. Yeah. You have music that's working for you instead of you going out to try to pay this bill and you know, you got to you got to sell this beat to pay this bill like, you know, your music is working for you after a point. Yeah. No, nah, that's that's a that's a really good point. Um, Cause yeah, starting out, you gotta you gotta get that momentum going for sure. Um, we got Big Tizzle Production says, "What tips or suggestions do you guys have for those of us who can't really play keys?" Um, what would you? Yeah, especially with the whole, you know the loop the loops issue. Like, what what would y'all say? Like, I YouTube man, I would learn some chords, man. That's that's how I learned how to play. I, I, mm -hmm. right. I, you know, I was just watching YouTube videos, you know, watching them call out the chords and then I would just practice the same set of chords until until it was just ingrained and, you know, and then move on to another set. And then it's, every time I would learn a progression or something, I would go back, make a beat with that progression in it. And that's how I kind of retain mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. I would say the same thing. You know, I mean, if you can't play the keys, First of all, understand that it's okay to not be able to play the keys. Mm -hmm. That's okay. You can still make great music not knowing how to play the keys. But I would, just like Clint said, start with one chord. Start with one chord, like literally one chord, three fingers, and, and make as many beats as you can with that chord. And then what I would say is the three fingers that you have on that chord, take each finger put it on the very next note. Now, that's a second chord. Once you and then master that chord and then take those three same three fingers, go to the next note on all three fingers. Now, that's three <laughs> chords. So it's going to take time. Like it's something that doesn't just happen overnight. Like it's years of me playing the keys to really master playing keys. So right. you just got to start from mastering one chord at a time. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, um, I would definitely say YouTube because that's, you know, that's how I learned pretty much. And then, you know, of course, playing in church and, and whatnot. But YouTube is definitely your best friend when it comes to piano chords because you can literally type in any song. Nine times out of ten, the song is there. It's broken down. And um, you can, you know, just pick up from there. Or you can, you know, get a book. Like, I got a book right here. It's just uh, piano chords right next to me. So anytime, you know, I'm inspired to look at some new chords or something like that, like, I'll study it and I'll learn that way. So reading again a book or youtube and youtube you know is everybody got piano tutorials and ways to play on youtube so yeah. definitely youtube bro yeah indeed we got uh we got one from zao bags backpack uh do i need to be registered with the pro if i plan on using something like distro kid um used to belong to csac as a writer and publisher but not anymore thanks um yeah, you yeah you still need a, a pro because DistroKid that's only like your distribution, um, you know, like your streaming streaming royalties and sales from digital downloads and stuff like that. But if you you know you still have to have a pro to collect your royalties, especially if you're working in the the TV space. Um, so definitely make sure you get that back in back in order. <clears throat> I I honestly would uh, would say like regardless of any situation you should have your pro, yeah. like regardless because I mean eventually you're going to run into a situation where you're going to need that part of of your business taken care of. So I would say no matter what you're doing, just go ahead and get you a writer's and and a, and a publisher's 
account because you just never know. Person, you know, and you wouldn't want to get to a situation and they ask you, well, what's your PRO? And then you say, well, give me three days. And, no, you don't want to do that. Yeah, you don't want to. Yeah, so I just say, sucks. get it no matter what. No matter what. Yeah. Especially, yeah. Like, if you're trying to do, you're doing music, like, seriously, you, you're going to need it at some point. Um, and that's on, that's on both sides of the industry. Um, mm -hmm. My guy Cutloose says, quality over quantity, indeed. Uh, Brother Brody says, what are these sites that I need to find for TV movie submissions? Man, it's a uh, it's a lot of them, man. Like what okay, when you. OK, this is a good question. When you guys started out, how did you start finding companies that want you know, your music to place for TV and film? Did you guys start with Google? Did you guys start with, you know, some of the, the third party services that are out there? How did you all get started in, in finding companies like that? I would say, you know, I started off on Google, you know, because that was all I knew. I mean, I started off on Google. Then I started buying um, television industry guides. I started buying those. And, you know, they, I mean, they come with thousands of companies in there. Then I started to, you know, just cold email and cold connect with people on LinkedIn. And, you know, just eventually you just start to pick it up. But, I mean, all of those things pretty much, I wouldn't say none of them don't work all of them work you know mm -hmm. it's just a matter of you finding the company that places the music you make i mean mm -hmm. you know but i mean all of the methods work as far as finding company <clears throat> yeah that's um i'm the same way like i did google um i brought a couple music directories where people actually have the companies listed out for you you know a little investment or whatnot and um mm -hmm. another thing i i still do to this day like i'll watch the end of the um uh, the credits on TV shows, yep. and now I'm noticing that they're showing music libraries. You know, on, as, as, instead of the music supervisor, they'll sh just show like the music library. So that's something you know that that works too because I just learned about three, four new music libraries that way. Yep. You know, so watching the end end credits is something that you know is something that can help you as well. Yeah, I like that one because that you know after watching the show, you already know what kind of music they use. So then when you you reach out to them it's a no brainer. You know what I mean? You know, you're not pitching blindly, you know what I mean? So that's a, that's a good one. Um, uh, let me see. We got one rice and green says I was looking at your free six step guy. The first step to registering with the pro I'm already a member of BMI for my first album. Is it best to apply for licensing through them or someone else? So BMI, BMI just collects, the performance royalty they don't like pitch your music for tv and film um they're just there to, to collect those royalties so you still have to reach out to music libraries music licensing companies um music publishers who specialize in pitching for tv and film to actually get a licensing deal and then that's when you know that's when you can start working with them to actually get get stuff synced uh, good question i think a lot of people get confused about that too <clears throat> um k gray wanted to know how did you guys get your first sync placement so this would be fun first sync placement stories man first placement mm -hmm. honestly my, my first placement my first placement came from a company that i was working with uh called dl music okay and they uh the first placement i mean you know music and it literally sat on their hard drive for a little bit because you know i didn't you know they wanted to kind of fill me out I, I think a lot of these companies want to fill you out and see how consistent you are first because mm -hmm. you know you start sending music and then i thought i would just immediately get placements but that first placement really hit home when i was sitting at home and heard my music on tv around my family mm -hmm. that's when it really really I really went hard after that, you know, because yeah. it was like, okay, it's really possible. Like, I remember saying I would hear my music on TV, and now my family is here, and I can go in the studio and play the same track that we're listening to now on television. So, yeah. um, but I got mine through a company called DL Music. I submitted, waited for, you know, a couple of months, and it, that first one came through, and it, it never stopped. That's what's up. Do you remember what, uh, what show or network or anything? Um... 
first show, I don't even remember what show because it's been on so many different shows. I want to say Access Hollywood. Okay, that's dope. I want to say Access Hollywood was like the very first placement, and it was for music that I didn't even know I knew how to create. So that that's wow. another story, but you Man. know, but Access Hollywood was my very first. Okay, what about you, LR? Yeah, uh, so the very first time I heard my music on TV. It's, it's a funny story because me and uh, my wife, we just, uh, we're watching Marriage Boot Camp uh, Hip Hop Edition. So this is uh, this is the season where they have Soldier Boy, Waka Flocka, you know, so it was kind of popular, you know, in, in that in that area at that time. Right. Now we're just watching it just to watch it. Like I had no idea, you know, my music was going to be on TV, but up to that point, like I said previously, I was submitting music every day you know for a good year two years so you know in the back of your mind there's always a possibility you know that you know you might hear your music or whatnot mm-hmm. but that we was just watching it just to watch it uh and then yeah I, it, it started playing and i'm like wait hold up that's and i'm like oh that's me and i'm telling my wife like yo that that's my beat you know i start screaming she's like what's wrong i'm like yo you don't hear that that's that's my beat that's my music being played yeah so she now she's happy then she starts calling her fame, like, yeah, he, he finally did it. Because I've been telling her, like, yo, I'm doing this music licensing. I'm going to get my music on TV. Right. And she, she's she's believing in me. She's But, you know, time they, is going they, by. They you want know? to see so, it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, exactly. They like, right. what's going on? Yeah. So when I first got that first placement, we watched it. We watched it together. Had no idea. And ever since then, I, you know, I've been going hard. Like Kevin said, once we hear that first one, that's now it. I'm going to go extra hard. You know, so that's kind of how oh, that yeah. happened for me. That's a feeling I would never forget. Yeah, you don't, man. Like, it, there's nothing like hearing that. And you know when it's yours, too. Like, I don't care yeah. how many beats you make, man. Like, you know when that's your beat playing um, in the background. So that that's super dope, man. Um, Let me see. What about you, Clint? Man, so my first one... Um, it was, it was Thursday night football, um, NFL network. I did, I found out like that the Friday after through the, the publisher that I I had sent it to, um, it was an instrumental of a song. I did like a full song called I'm taking over and they used the instrumental for like multiple, you know, highlight segments and things like that. Um, but I like, I, so the publisher had a website, right. And then anytime somebody would get a, a placement, they would update their website. So I was, I was doing a lot of work for them. So like I was checking that joint like every day, like, let me see if I got a placement. So <laughs> I was getting ready for the yep. gym and, um, I checked it like before I left. And then I seen like my picture scroll across and then it had like the title of the joint. Um, and then yeah and then after that like you know i had looked it up and um yeah dude like i was i was geeked man i the first time i i actually heard like heard my music while watching tv was um uh was a keeping keeping up with the kardashians placement um so Mm -hmm. that that was when i actually experienced like watching it live was like oh like Yo, that's that's my joint, and they um they played a decent chunk of it too, so that was exciting. But yeah, yeah after the first one, after NFL Network, they used that same track on Fox Sports, um, and then that ended up being a a bigger check because it was um you know it, it was aired on Fox, so um, it was a major mm-hmm. network. But yeah, man, and then that was it. I was like, if I can do this, and this is just one, like now it's time to lock in, and um yeah, I, I haven't looked back since. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lance Walker says, "Should you send over already mastered music for submissions, or should it just be a good mix only?" Um. Now I get this question all the time. I mean, honestly, every placement that I've had, surprise, I have never mastered one beat. Mm-hmm. Never. I've never mastered. So a good mix will get you placed, but I'm not against getting your music mastered. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say um if you can, you know, it's always best to have your best foot forward if you can, but don't stress it if you can't. Just like a good mix can get you placed cuz I'm the same way. Like half my tracks are not mastered, some are, um but if you can do it, if you can't, don't 
don't let that be the reason why you won't submit or you know let the, try to hold you back. Yeah, yeah, man. I say like at least at least submit it, and they'll let you know like if it's if they don't if they don't want to use it, and then you'll know at that point. Okay, maybe I have to step step some things up as far as my mixing and mastering is concerned. But yeah, it's it's one of those things, man, where you you want to put your best foot forward, but then at the same time, like literally, they're gonna turn the music all the way down because people talking over yeah. it anyway. Um, so you know they may not be super super critical about it. Um, let me see. We got one from Alvin Alexander concerning using virtual instruments such as Finale Composer software. Though original composing using those instruments is that acceptable for sync licensing? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I mean, if if you're creating if you're creating the music. Um, no matter which which software you're using, you should be good. Even if even if you're using like you know like a like Omnisphere or something. Like if you're playing the the chords, the melodies, you're creating that stuff. Um, you're good to go. Hopefully that answers answers this question. If not, just you know clarify it in the in the chat. Um, Big Tizzle says, do they let you know when and what your music will be on so you can hear it? <laughs> that's that's <No>. always fun. <laughs> yeah, like no, no. <laughs> not at never. All. Like there's no, never. I, I'll get like I know Toonsat Toonsat T U N E S A T dot com. That's probably like your best chance at finding out as soon as possible. Outside of that, you're waiting and you won't see it until you get the royalty check from it. Yeah, Toonsat now, one, Toonsat one thing is that clutch. I, yeah. What did you say, Kev? We we love Toonsat. One one thing that I like to say is I noticed that when I was so focused on where where's my music getting placed? Is it getting placed? Where is that? How much money am I make? How much, you know, where it never happened like that. Like when I literally locked in and focused on the music, it just started happening. Yeah. So I would say, as hard as it may seem, if you stay locked in on the music, those placements start coming. But when you try to focus and look and refresh and and email and and just start doing all that, it 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 never works that way. It just never works, yep. you know. Yep. Yeah, and then, and then it's a numbers game too. So people, I've spoken to people when they they say one or two tracks, and then they're like, "Yo, where's where's the placement at?" Oh, and I'm like, you know, one or two <laughs> tracks is won't really. You know, get it done. You got to keep going and going. So, when if you keep submitting, you won't even like Kev said. You won't even have time to think about yo, is it getting placed or who, who's using it or what. And it'll just start coming in like a avalanche. So, I would say not to worry about that. Just continue to create the music and continue to send it out. And then time will come where you start seeing the royalty checks, and you're gonna be like, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, you drive yeah. yourself nuts worrying about that, worrying about that stuff. Oh my god! And then I see man. one thing I see a lot of producers do too is, like LR was saying, you know, they'll submit the one and two two tracks, and then they'll stop and wait until to see to see if those two tracks work. But then that whole time, right. like by the time you actually see that, okay, say one of the tracks did get a placement, and then you finally get the royalty check. Now you're starting all the way over again because you haven't done anything. That whole time you were waiting mm-hmm. to see if those one or two tracks got placed. You could have had 20, 30, 50 tracks in rotation, you know. Um, it, wow. and c- sometimes they'll, uh, uh, editors, man, if they send your stuff like in a batch, they'll pull like multiple tracks in one episode. So, yeah, man, the, the more tracks you have, you know, the the more the better chance you have of, of something getting placed. Uh, tracks. Let me see. I'm gonna take a. I'm gonna take like. I'll take like one, two, two more questions. I won't hold you guys. I know you guys are busy. Cool guy. Ninety one says, "Is it better for a producer to focus on rappers or focus more on sync licensing placements?" Ooh, I love that question. Yeah, I love that. Now, I love that question. I mean, you know, honestly, years ago, I would have probably said. And I mean, in some cases, you you can do both. In in fact, you can really do both. Yeah. You know, now 
in in my opinion though, once you start to get placed and you start to taste that first place placement blood, you want to go towards that direction. Now, I mean, that's not saying if you have a passionate rapper that that that's dope that you know that you love working with, you can't work with him. What I would do is merge both together, have that rapper make songs for TV, Boom. and then that way you still doing both. You know, yep. I mean, in my opinion, that's what I would do. Yeah, yep, same here. Like, yo, like, like, talk to the rapper. Yo, I, I'm doing music for Sync Licensing. Let's knock out, let's knock out some stuff that we know will get placed. And now y'all, you know, y'all build that relationship because songs, songs are needed just as much as instrumental music is needed. Um, so it's honestly it's a win-win because then the rapper he gets to help build his brand because he's getting his music placed on shows and networks and things like that, commercials um so yeah you i i don't think like you can't lose with that with that situation facts yeah man um let me see t to taria says since you are established do you go through music library companies or do you work independently and depend on previously built relationships what is the site tune set oh i'll type i'll type the site in the chat so y'all can uh, see how to spell it um so yeah, so yeah, what what do you guys take on that? Oh, you can't hear you. You're muted, Kev. Uh. -uh. Oh wait, okay. Oh man, he bounced. <laughs> he bounced. I mean, I I I I I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. take a stab at that question. Okay. So what what I um what we like to do well, what I like to do I like to uh, do both. Mm -hmm. Uh, I still use the uh music libraries. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead go ahead Kev. Okay. Okay yeah um as far as my own submissions at this point I mean honestly me and you know LR have a team now we call it you know we actually have our own music library you know so. We call it KBLR Music, and we have a team now where we don't even use, or well, I don't even submit music for television. LR really don't submit. We focus now on helping other producers get their music placed, and we've established new and old contacts. So, mm -hmm. you know, at, at this stage, we're not even really, well, I'm not really submitting music actively for TV film. Hopefully that answered the question. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I mean, there's so like after after working in any type of industry for so long, like you start to learn there's different areas and, and lanes that you can kind of go down to where you're not necessarily doing the same thing. Like you're working in the same industry, but you may be doing something there. It's no different than, you know, an artist, a producer, a songwriter becoming a, an A&R or a manager or a, a, a label exec. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you just you shift and you kind of do. Um, different things and then really man like after getting so many placements man it just it becomes about giving back more and you realize just how much um how many people still don't know about you know different things getting tv placements and things like that so you know you kind of feel that that urge to just give back that information um and i feel like you guys you guys do a great job at that um in fact man like before i even got started i remember I think I came across a a, a a big homie Kev interview with um uh man, with Postman or something on YouTube, mm -hmm. and that's what kind of um kind of triggered the thought. Like, man, I, like that sound that sounds pretty dope, especially hearing it from a producer who's who's had like major placements and credits and things like that. Um, so it was it was just intriguing, man. So thank you for that, man, because that that was a huge inspiration as well. Just coming up, man, as a, a young producer, um, man. man welcome, so, bro. Yeah. So, man, like, what what do you guys have going on? So you guys mentioned you're helping producers now. Like, how can producers get linked up with that? Like, or is that something you're offering producers now? Like, what are you guys working on? Tell them tell them about that. That sounds dope. Yeah, so uh, we have a, a group uh, called Placement Profits where we meet with them every week um, and, you know, they submit their music and we critique their music and, you know, we kind of show them what to do, how to do it, 
you know, we kind of give them the ins and outs of the sync licensing game. And, you know, we pretty much give them all the information me and Kevin know combined together and we share it with them. And now we're helping them get placed. As we said, um, we've gotten their music placed on ESPN shows, first take, um, some PGA golf stuff. Um, but it's, you know, from the, from how we was teaching them and how we are teaching them, you know, they take the, the format that, you know, we're teaching them and they go out you know, structure it, and then you know they go submit, and then we go get placements. Um, yeah. we got we got we got some beasts, man. We got a couple beasts in the group that's um that's really you know taking heed to what we're teaching, applying to what we're teaching, and um just going hard. You know, now for for other producers to to con to get with us, we do have a submission process that we go through. Um, if your music is ready, you know, you know, we, we of course just like any other. Music library, you know, we'll, you know, go about it that way. But, um, I'll, Kev, do you want to tell them a uh, email submission process or how do you want to do that? Oh, yeah, 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 that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so, so, uh, any, any producers that want to, you know, submit music to KBLR music, uh, the email is KBLR submissions at gmail.com. Um, and if your music is ready, we, and if somebody from the team likes what they hear, you know, we can go ahead and get you a contract. Uh, if it's not ready, uh, you know, of course, you know, it'll be a no. Or, you know, this, this is just how the game is. Yeah. But, uh, you know, but, yeah, we're all working, though. We're working. Yeah. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. I see it, man. So how many, like, how many tracks should they submit? Because... Hey, man, like I know people like boy, they'll they'll load y'all up with with a, a whole ten albums. <laughs> so yeah. Is it is it a certain number y'all want? Is it just one or like what? What? How should they submit? I think three three is fine. Just to okay. see where you know we could by three we can kind of gauge what you you know what you're good at, what your strengths are. Yeah. Um, so it's just three three tracks. Uh, and yeah, give us some time too. Please give us some time. Yeah. Yeah. I know you know people want instant gratification right now. Mm -hmm. Give it, give but, us some time because we do have a lot going on, you know. So do give us some time and um, yeah, three tracks is good. Bet, bet, mm -hmm. that's what's up, man. Well, y'all heard it. Submit your three tracks to KBLR submissions, um, so you can be a part of that community and be a part of, um, you know, work with work with people who are doing it, man. Um, that's. That I feel like that's the fastest path to success is sitting up underneath someone who's doing what you want to do and can, you know, help you avoid those pitfalls, man. So shout out to you guys for doing that. And um, man, I won't hold y'all. I appreciate y'all coming through. Um, where can they find y'all? Is it like Instagram, website? Like where's the best place for people to, to link up with y'all and follow y'all for uh, for more information on, on what y'all got going on, man? Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Big Homie Kev One. Um, you know, LR. Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram, LR Beats eighty nine. Instagram, um, always there. LinkedIn, if you on LinkedIn, or Lawrence Ricks on LinkedIn. Uh, and yeah, that's where I'm at most of the time. Dope, dope. That's what's up, man. Well, thanks again, guys. Y'all have a great rest of the week. Keep killing it. Keep crushing it. And uh, man, we'll be in touch soon. Salute. You too, man. All right. Peace. Peace. Peace.